This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about exploring Bitcoin block number 666666. And of course, that is a very famous number from the book of Revelation chapter 13. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That's an important phrase. And his number is 600, three score and six. And of course, three score is equal to 60. I'll put a link to this article in the description notes below that talks a little bit about this. It's sort of the opposite of Gematria, where you basically convert letters into numbers. Here you'd be converting numbers into letters. And the full passage is quite interesting. Bitcoiners sometimes talk about it because it has to do with buying and selling. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, uh, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here's wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast first the number of a man and his number is 666 666 sometimes in this passage because it has to do with buying and selling things people attribute it to as a sort of a prophecy of credit cards or the coming cbdc central bank digital currencies i'd say to be honest i'm not a big fan of taking isolated passages from the book of Revelation, trying to match them with contemporary events, that can be a dangerous thing to do. So I'm gonna be talking about Bitcoin today instead, and we'll be talking about that block that has the two 666s. There's a particular passage, uh, there's a particular transaction in it that's quite interesting. This is a famous block for this reason. This is that transaction. And on the left, we have the inputs. We have a Bitcoin address here. We have a certain amount of Bitcoin, 0 0.01 Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And then we have three outputs that we're gonna be talking about. Obviously, there's an op return here, which is pretty interesting because it's they've embedded a quote from the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 21 do not over be do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good and then there are two other outputs that actually contain sats that contain bitcoin you can see the op return transaction these are unspendable so it's the smart way of doing it is you don't put any money in there because it can never be spent again but these other two transaction outputs are quite interesting because what they demonstrate is that someone has tried to pick bitcoin addresses that contains some embedded English words. If you look at this first one, to me it looks like it says God XX me, God kisses me, God loves me as in XXOO. And then the second Bitcoin uh, address, it looks like they've embedded the word Bible in here. They, there's some capitalized letters and some lowercase letters. And both of these, actually, these, these Bitcoin addresses did receive Bitcoin in this transaction. So the Bitcoin's being sent from this address to these two addresses and then the op return address is part of this and i think in in a sense this is meant to sort of counteract the 666 666 of this block and sort of bless the block xoxo uh, abbreviation for hugs and kisses that's what makes me think perhaps this is saying that god loves me but of course i could just be reading stuff in now let's take a look at these individual bitcoin addresses because there's something interesting about them as well the first one or actually the second one that contains the word bible embedded we can see that now it has a confirmed balance of zero bitcoin if we scroll down we can see that there were two transactions that involved this bitcoin address First, there was some Bitcoin sent to this address, 0 0.004321 Bitcoin as part of this, this op return transaction. And then that was later spent, uh, that was later spent away. So this Bitcoin address here, we can see is the same as this Bitcoin address. And in a later transaction, the Bitcoin was sent to another address. Now this is significant because it tells us that whoever generated this Bitcoin address did have the private keys for it because otherwise they would not have been able to spend from this address. If this had been what's called a fake pub key address, in that case, the Bitcoin would have just been uh, locked in there because Bitcoin was sent to an address and the person did not have the private key to it. And so it looks like both of these addresses, the other one that said God, that says God loves me, it's very similar. We have some Bitcoin being sent to the God loves me Bitcoin address, and then it's sent out of there approximately, uh, call it nine months later. So that's that's basically interesting because it shows that both of these, there's an op return here where this the Satoshis don't get trapped, and then we have of these two Bitcoin outputs that are later spent from. And as I said, the fact that both of these Bitcoin addresses were subsequently spent from demonstrate that the person had the private keys to these. These are called vanity addresses. So he probably, he or she probably used some sort of software that takes random private keys and then looks at the dry Bitcoin addresses to see if any of them contain recognized English words. This is what's called address grinding, I believe. If you're enjoying this video so far, just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support the channel. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion.
suggestion for a future video and share this video with a friend or family member. So let's go back and look inside of this block a little more. We're going to be looking at the same transaction. And if you go to mempool.space, I'll put links to all these in the description notes below. And you click right here on details. It's pretty interesting because we can see some things we've heard about on the left. For example, here's the witness data. You've probably heard about that. That's the signature data, which is separate in this input. And then we have the three Bitcoin addresses, the God loves me Bitcoin address, the Bible Bitcoin address. And then down here, we have the op return address. And again, we can see the quote from Romans. Uh, but what's especially interesting about this is just, I thought this would be a good occasion to look inside of the op return uh, output here and see how it is constructed. So you have script pub key ASM, you have script pub key hex. As I understand it, these are representations of the exact same data. We can see op return here, which tells you that anything that comes after that is to be ignored and cannot be spent by the protocol. And then right here, the fact that this says 70, that tells you this is 70 bytes worth of data. And it turns out that the, there's a hex version of this, which is exactly the same. If we go to the next slide and take a look here, I've copy pasted that directly from the script pub key hex. Script pub key just is sort of the locking script that gives you the conditions for it to be spent. But basically here is that data. And if we look at it at the beginning here, the 6a is the code for, it's basically the opcode or the, the hex representation of the opcode for op return. And then 46 in hexadecimal is the same as 70 in decimal. So this is the size of the data payload that is contained in here. It says 70 right here. It says 46 right here. And basically 46 in hexadecimal is the same as 70 in the decimal system. And then what follows, if we look right here at the beginning with the 446 and ending with the 231 is exactly the same as what follows here. So this is basically how data is embedded. This is a 70 byte op return. And once the nodes see that that's 6A, they know that any SATs in that output are permanently unspendable, as we said. That's why you'll rarely see people put SATs in an op return. In terms of 46 and hexadecimal, hexadecimal being 70 and decimal, if you didn't know that, you could use a chart like this, which basically converts. We can see here it says 46 and hexadecimal is the same as 70 and decimal. Then you have the binary and the octal here as well. Or you can just Google hexadecimal to decimal. Uh, converter, you put in the hex value of 46 and you get 70. So there are different ways of doing this. The next thing I want to do though is take this data directly from, we want to begin with a 446 because what comes before just basically says op return, says 70 bytes in hexadecimal. And this is, this is the actual, actual data payload here beginning with 446 ending in 231. So we're going to copy paste that here in this converter which basically converts hex to English text. We click convert and we can see that what comes out is do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good, Romans 12, 21. And so this is the representation in English text of what is being represented here in hex. Now this, as we said, this is an op return of 70 bytes. This would have been relayed by nodes back then. I should have mentioned when this transaction took place. Uh, it took place in January of 2021. So this was well before Bitcoin Core 30, obviously. But an op return of 70 bytes would have been relayed by nodes back then since it was still under the 80 byte cap. Only perhaps some knots nodes that were running uh, uh, op return uh, data carrier size maxing out at 40 bytes would not have relayed or sent this transaction to other nodes before it was mined. But basically 70 bytes is under 80 bytes and this would not have been needed to be submitted directly to a miner as would have been the case back then if the op return had been greater than 80 bytes. So it does put a kind of a data limit here in terms of the practicality of getting stuff in a block. Bitcoin Core 30 obviously uncaps op returns so that nodes running Core 30 will relay op returns up to 100,000 bytes. You just saw what 70 bytes looks like. 100,000 bytes is obviously quite a bit more. And that's not what conservative software development looks like, changing a default setting from 80 bytes to 100,000 bytes in one fell swoop. I think that's actually just sheer madness. For this reason, I don't recommend browsing op return transactions since the release of Core 30 on October 10th of this year, 2025. Because so much data is now allowed there, the potential for nasty stuff like CSAM or malware stuffed into op returns is the biggest risk. By contrast, 80 bytes is just enough for an emoji or short Bible verse as we've seen, 
or a couple of hashes. I want to show you how hashing works. I'm going to be taking President Trump's tweet from Thanksgiving, which we can see is a fairly long tweet here. This was posted on November 27th of 2025. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it into a SHA-256 hasher. This is the input here. I basically copied the entire tweet, which is quite long. And then it's hash. This is a SHA-256 hash. The output is right here. And if you change any letter, if for example, I change, I just get rid of this S, for example, we can see that the output completely changes. Let's put the S back and we can see that it just changes. Um, it doesn't just change one letter of the output, but it changes the whole thing. So this is a very nice tool. This is basically what Bitcoin mining is doing double SHA-256 hashes, but hashing is a really nice way to prove to be able to demonstrate that a very long text, for example, here hasn't been changed, that if the S is left out or the S is in, you get completely different hashes. If we take this output here, the output of a SHA-256 hash is always 32 bytes. And so if your op return, the data carrier size limit on those is 80 bytes, you can fit, you can easily fit two SHA-256 hashes, which would be 64 bytes, and you'd have room for some more data there as well. So this is one function. One, one thing you could do, which would not, I don't think, be a huge abuse of block space, you could take Trump's tweet here or his post, you could convert it, you could SHA-256 hash it, and then you could put this output in a in an op return. And this would basically be a way of time stamping this and proving that this text existed at a certain point in time. Of course, we do have the timestamp that X that Twitter provides here, but this in the future, of course, could be modified or changed, whereas the Bitcoin blockchain is immutable. And so if you put this in a block, you basically put, put the hash in a block, and then we would know that that text would have had to have existed by that point in time, because otherwise it could not have been hashed. And every text will have its own hash. So this is sort of a unique fingerprint identifier. So that's, I think, a legitimate out, a, a legitimate way of using using Opportune as sort of a time stamping service. Sticking 40, 60, 80 bytes in Opportune really isn't the problem as we've seen. Here's the problem. The problem is giant Opportunes. Here's Peter Todd putting a hundred kilobyte transaction, Opportune transaction that is full of malware and viruses for DOS, Windows, Linux, Android, and Mac OS. And he included this in a block because he's a bad actor. And then of course we have inscriptions which use the witness space and use inputs rather than uh, rather than outputs. At least you put the data there. And this is complete garbage that doesn't belong on the blockchain. And it takes up quite a bit of space as Arthur Van Pelt writes here. Since 2023, the Bitcoin blockchain grew 125 gigabytes in data spam transactions and only 25 gigabytes in native transactions. That's the real problem. And large op returns will definitely contribute to this much more than just putting tiny little Bible verses. Also wanted to talk about before we finish, it's obviously yesterday it was Black Friday, it's sale time. So I wanted to put together a sale for, for uh, a Black Friday sale for uh, Bitcoin University and Bitcoin University Premium. I don't talk about this much in general, but you should know that I do have this paid site where I have a paid course for Bitcoin. There's a Bitcoin forum where we have discussions and then there are the live classes that I do once a month on Zoom and everyone can tune in who's a subscriber. And then I do a recording of it and post it here. So for example, we have a, a lecture here on the Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin Loans. We have a big, uh, lecture here on non-KYC Bitcoin, uh, UTXO consolidation, uh, border wallets, how to use Lightning, etc. So there's a lot of material here going all the way up to our most recent one, which we did just a couple days ago, November 22nd, we talked about the best Bitcoin exchanges, the Bitcoin bear market, if it's coming or not, and then went deeper into soft fork. So once you've exhausted all the free material on YouTube, I'd encourage you to look at this. If you've been looking into this and deciding whether or not to become a member, now's a really good time because I am running a Black Friday sale. I'll put a link to this in the description notes below, but you basically go to where it says join. You click under monthly tuition, get it now. It'll take you to this checkout. And then I'll give you the promo code that you can put right here. It's Bitcoin, all caps, 2025. And once you click the check mark here, you're going to see the price go from $79 per month to $63 per month. You can sign up for just one month and then cancel. There's no contract or anything like that. It's just a 30 day subscription. So if this is something that interests you, I'll put, uh, put links in all the description notes below. And then again, the promo code is Bitcoin 2025, Bitcoin all caps. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.